So what is going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here and welcome back to another video. There's a few archetypes from the era of GX that I really enjoyed and some from the anime. I wasn't really playing the game until the very end of GX era, which was like Light of Destruction. And then I came in around when Duelist Genesis came out. That's when I really started playing the physical card game. I don't know anything about the GX era of Yu-Gi-Oh. I never really cared for watching the anime and I know Ancient Gears stem from there. The ugly ass blonde nigga, he's the guy who plays Ancient Gears. For the longest time, Ancient Gear has been, even throughout the 5Ds era, a, a terrifying deck, simply because by popping Gear Town, you could then summon something like Ancient Gear Gadgetron Dragon, and then Gadgetron Dragon could be a 3k beat stick who, you know, cannot be mirror forced, cannot uh, magic cylindered or like deprisoned. It was a pretty strong boss monster, and a lot of people you know, back in the day when the field spell rules were different, if you activate a field spell over another field spell, like when there was already one on the field, I believe it, it, it counts as being destroyed through game mechanics. And so that was also able to trigger Gear Town's ability to summon out Gadgetron Dragon. And that's really like one of the only Ancient Gear monsters that was really used besides Ancient Gear Golem himself, simply because a lot of the Ancient Gear support is kind of awkward. For some reason, they seem to be built around gadgets. They had like a lot of like level fives and sixes where depending on which gadget you s you attributed to summon it, it had a different effect. For the longest time, that kind of perplexed me. Maybe back in the day when Ultimate Offering was around, something like this could have been interesting, but going into the modern game, they never really tried to update Ancient Gear until we got the support from one of the Duelist packs and we got like Ancient Gear Fusion and like the Megaton Golem. And we got this destruction deck that one time too that came with like Wyvern and Reactor Dragon was the boss monster for that one. Yeah, so there was like a few interesting cards. Also, Reactor Dragon has a fucking sword. But yeah, so for the longest time, a lot of the support was like outdated and really hard to play in like a modern way other than just popping Gear Town. And once they changed the field spell rule, that kind of just Ancient Gear saw like no more play after that. Coming into 2024, learning that we're gonna get more Ancient Gear support has been a really interesting journey for me because as a former Earth Machine player who love the absolute shit out of playing trains and infinitrax and machina ancient gear was the one archetype that i felt was like the original earth machine deck but had like no respect on its name so to be able to play ancient gear in a way that is new and revitalized you know i'm starting to appreciate what this deck can do my very early diagnosis is this deck is tenpai with like extra steps it's a boneless tenpai or some would even call it a more based tenpai so throughout this video we're, we're going to be discussing and dissecting why that is or why i believe that may be starting with some of the new support right so we got ancient gear advance so advance allows you to add an ancient gear spell trap from deck to hand you can tribute a monster to draw one after tributing that monster Monster, you can summon level five or higher monsters that are ancient gear golem or mention it without tributing and then you cannot set cards to turn that you activate ancient gear advance so when we got the structure deck with the reactor dragon a lot of the support started saying you cannot set cards to turn that you activate this which was really sad because there's this really funny card called ancient gear drill where if you control an ancient gear monster you can discard a card and set a spell directly from deck i guess because of the way the game is played now, they don't want you to use a card like this. Any card that would search this card would just stop you from setting for the entire turn. Advance says the, the entire turn that you activate it, you cannot set a card. Wyvern says rest of this turn, and I guess the other support says for the rest of this turn, Advance is the only one that says the entire turn you, you can't set. So it's kind of interesting to see just the way that the new and the old support interact. It's like they want the new support to be its own thing without taking full advantage of the old support, which is kind of weird. Could Konami bring this deck in a weird direction with the structure deck? I'm not sure if it was the right direction, but now with the Legacy of Destruction support, they seem to be doubling down on the no setting, just all gas, no breaks. As we come to Wyvern, which is one that was already out, but let's just rediscuss it. Wyvern is a card that can search any Ancient Gear card from deck to hand on summon. Also, if it attacks, your opponent cannot activate monster effects until the end of damage death. You cannot set cards 
the turn that you search with its effect. With Wyvern, you have a card that gets you access to the entire engine, but again, does not let you set. And as we explore more of the Ancient Gear support, there really seems to be no logic as to why they don't want you to set cards the same turn that you use Ancient Gears. Maybe it's some weird anime thing that I didn't really, you know, that was mentioned in the anime, some weird like drawback of the Ancient Gear archetype, but that was not a thing until this structure deck came out. None of the other support says that, other than the post structure deck, the post reactor dragon structure deck support say you can't set. I don't know why that is, but it just is, right? So then we have Ancient Gear Catapult, right? So Catapult is while you control no monsters, you can target a face-up card you control, pop it, and if you do special summon Ancient Gear from your deck, ignoring summoning conditions, which is also important because some of your best Ancient Gear cards, the original Ancient Gear Golem cannot be special summoned at all. So some of the Ancient Gear cards have to say ignoring summoning condition just to play around some of the older cards restrictions. You can banish this card from your graveyard, target a face-up card you control, pop it, and if you do summon a token, Catapult is the double hard once per turn where you can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. With Ancient Gear Advance, because you have to control no monsters, previously searching this with Wyvern was extremely redundant. Now, because of Advance it being a spell card that can search Catapult, now Catapult is usable first turn guaranteed every single time. Because it Advance not only being able to search the Catapult, but like let's say you happen to start with Wyvern. If you start with Wyvern and you search Advance, Advance can then tribute the Wyvern to draw you a card. Then you can resolve the Catapult because you will no longer have the Wyvern on field. It basically allows Wyvern and Advance to be one card starters, you can say, for, for the deck. And that's why the interaction that Catapult has with Gear Town is even twice as important, right? Because Catapult already summons one from deck, but because it destroys any card we control, to summon one, by destroying a Gear Town, we can summon two monsters from deck, not just one. And because of the way that it works, Catapult will summon the, the monster first, and then Gear Town can chain block the effect of whatever monster that we summon. And so what monster do we want to summon off of our Catapult? It's our Ancient Gear Dark Golem. So Dark Golem, one of the new cards out of Legacy Destruction and On Summon, restricts you from being able to set for the rest of the turn. And you also add up to two Ancient Gear, or Gear Town itself, like two Ancient Gear cards or Gear Town itself from your deck to your hand, and then you discard one card. So you add two, drop one. And then he also has the original Ancient Gear Golem's effect where um, if he attacks, your opponent can activate spells and traps. This does not have any summoning restriction, right? So you don't need to summon it off of Catapult. You could summon it off of Gear Town. But the reason why this is so great Great is because by summoning this off of catapult plus gear town not only do you get to search to drop one but you also get to chain block it in that way you can search your follow-up without worrying about particular hand traps or if you're going second you can you know play around like monster effect negations and such thanks to one card released in the ancient gear structure deck we may not even need to worry about hand traps or interruptions, and that is Ancient Gear Fortress. So during the turn, they are normal or special summoned. Your opponent cannot target Ancient Gear monsters you control with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, meaning they can't be impermed, can't be SP'd, and they can't be destroyed, right? Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of Ancient Gear cards and effects. So if you already have Fortress and you're you know, activating advance, you're activating catapult, you're activating anything that isn't gear town, really, you're 100% protected as long as you control fortress. And so this card makes the deck really scary going second. It's almost like the Tenpai Field Spell, where Tenpai Field Spell says fire dragons are unaffected. This says not only can they not be targeted to turn that they're summoned like the Pearly Field Spell, but this also says your opponent cannot respond to their effects or activation. So that's for your spells and your monsters and your traps as well, because there are some trap cards. And then if it's destroyed while in spell and trap zone, you can special summon an ancient gear monster from hand or graveyard, but you're locked into ancient gear for the turn. As we saw with like something like ancient gear catapult, if this is in like a turn three scenario and you have fortress up and you just need to destroy something, catapult's graveyard effect could actually come in clutch really well, because if you just need to get back, like let's say dark golem from graveyard, 
graveyard, you can use Catapult, Pop Fortress, Summon Dark Golem from Grave, and you know be able to search your follow-up, which won't be perfect because you no longer get the protection from Fortress, but the fact that you still get the option to summon it back and you know, if you have enough hand traps and interruption during your opponent's turn to stop them from playing the game to the point where where you can get away with one or two activations, being able to go for Dark Golem and then being able to search potentially a game winning card could be a very big deal. It's a really nice card to have. I'm not sure what the ratios on it should be because it seems like it should be a three of, but it also feels like drawing too many of these won't do you any good and maybe you should only play one because it's searchable. So it's really up in the air how many copies should be played, but it's not a bad card to have overall just because it, it, it protects you from hand traps and it can potentially give you follow up. So what are some other cards that Ancient Gear Dark Golem can search? The Ancient Gear Fusion, right? So Ancient Gear Fusion uh, can fusion summon an Ancient Gear Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from hand or field. If you use Ancient Gear Golem or Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound, which is one that I don't even want to go over because of how little it does. If you use Golem or Ultimate Pound that you face, face up on your field as a material, then you can also use monsters from deck. Hence, now we can ask the question, what do some of the Ancient Gear Fusions look like that we can get off of Ancient Gear Fusion? So we have the Chaos Ancient Gear Giant, a 45k beater, which is unaffected by spawn traps. It stops your opponent from activating monsters during the battle phase. It can attack all monsters your opponent control once each, and then it does piercing as well. So this is basically like a Bugente Susanowo with the Tenpai uh, restriction with the Ancient Gear Golem. Your opponent cannot activate when you attack restriction with piercing well actually regular golem does piercing too so that's that's normal but yeah this is your ultimate play and the fact that you get to use three of the ancient gear monsters from deck because you have a uh, dark golem plus fusion means like this could potentially go for game yes it's unaffected by spawn trap effects so it's unlikely this card will be gaining attack so you'll you'll have to be swinging for 45 each time but the fact is, is that we can get Dark Golem on field without using our normal summon, meaning that this most likely not be the only card on our field when we attack with it. Next is the OG Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem. It just requires Ancient Gear Golem plus any two Ancient Gears. Has to be fusion summoned. It does piercing. If it attacks, your opponent can activate spells and traps. And then if it's destroyed, it can summon Ancient Gear back from grave, ignoring summoning conditions. Now it's at 4,400 and it requires one less material, but it really doesn't do much. We probably won't go into to it unless it is off of our megaton golem and megaton golem was was released with ancient gear fusion and so what megaton golem does is when it attacks your opponent can activate spells and traps and if it's fusion summoned using two or more ancient gear golem or the ultimate pound it could just say ancient gear golem monsters and just save us all the trouble it can attack that many times during the battle phase so to resolve ancient gear fusion really you're going to be using Ancient Gear Golem anyway. So if you mill another of the original Ancient Gear Golem, by the way, because you can't use Ultimate Pound from deck and have it treated as second or third material, it can only be Ultimate Pounds on field. But if you're milling it from deck, kind of like Branded Fusion, you can't mill like uh, the Albion Dragon from deck and have it treated treated as Fallen of Albaz. Uh, any fusion substitution effect only apply in hand, field, or graveyard. They don't apply in deck and they don't apply in the Banish Zone, I believe as well. Don't ask me why, that's just how it works. So that's why you can't like light hex seal with Lubellion, I believe. If you use like one of the original Ancient Gear Golem on top of your Dark Golem, then he gets to attack two times. If it's fusion summoned and it leaves a field because of an opponent's card effect, it can summon out the ultimate Ancient Gear Golem from extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. It can float into the regular ultimate ancient gear golem if it's removed from field um by an opponent's card effect which is cool and then the last ancient gear fusion which is something a little more interesting is the ancient gear howitzer and this is the one that i like a lot just because of the way that it works so it only requires two ancient gears and it has 1800 defense but the catch is is that it's just straight up unaffected by everything if you're in a game state where not much is going on, sometimes going first, this might even be a really interesting fusion to summon just because of how it works, right? So it's unaffected, 
And I know in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, being unaffected doesn't mean much. You know, you have cards like Herald of the Abyss, and you have cards like um, Evenly Matched and Daruma Cannon that kind of just ignore cards that are unaffected by card effects. It's kind of stupid, but it's the way it is, right? And so during your main phase, you can inflict a thousand damage to your opponent. Now that's a hard once per turn. So even if you had multiple copies, you'd still only be able to do that once per turn. But uh, if it's destroy of a battle, it sends to the graveyard, right? With 18 defense, they're probably gonna destroy of a battle. You get to summon an ancient gear from deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Meaning if this is destroy of a battle, you could summon the original ancient gear golem. You could summon out dark golem. You could summon out wyvern. You could either go for a big body or you can go for starters, extenders, and like pivot cards that can let you set up your strategy going into next turn. And the cool thing is, is that he doesn't have to be attacked, right? Like if you summon him and you want to swing into something like turn three, like your opponent leaves something in like a attack position and you just want to swing, you can do that too. You can just swing into a, into something with like Howitzer and then summon out your own ancient gear from deck. So I really like Howitzer. It's a little slow, right? because it required your opponent to attack it, but I like the sort of like threatening, like you can inflict a thousand every turn. There was almost a, a, a burn ancient gear strategy out there. Thanks to the ancient gear hunting hound, it basically inflicted 600 to your opponent on summon. And then it let you summon an ancient gear using monsters from field or hand. The only issue with this card is that it didn't actually search another copy of itself. So there was no way to like guarantee you'd be able to fusion summon with this unless you were playing more ancient gear cards. So it was really weird, but there was a, a point in time where I was playing ancient gear like this. It was just hunting hound, wyvern, catapult gear town. That was like way back in the day, maybe like a decade ago, like, or maybe not a decade but so something close to like a decade ago. It was really, really back in the day. Arc five, I almost forgot what was before Reigns. It was like Arc five era, um, like maybe like eight, nine years ago that I was playing Ancient Gears like this. I believe I even like, if you go back way, 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 way back on my channel, I probably even made a video about it. Not that you should watch it because it's probably a dog shit video by this point, but that's just how long it's been. It's been kind of funny seeing Ancient Gear evolve throughout these years, but still kind of not reach its success yet, right? It's not like Super Heavy, or Super Heavy was a joke deck for years from Arc 5 onward, and then last year it got like the support of all time, and then became like one of the strongest engines in the game, and then got hit immediately here in TCG. In, in OCG, it's still being used. Here in TCG, you can use it as like a starter engine for like another archetype, or you can find like an interesting way to play it, but to play pure Super Heavy requires a lot more innovation now because they hit some of the best, or they hit the best card in the deck, which was the link one so yeah so those are our ancient gear fusions ancient gear fusion isn't the only card that can summon them out ultimate pound has an ability that lets us add polymerization right it's basically a fake ancient gear golem it, it has a funny pose i guess shadow realm i'm sending you to tampa florida all it really does is gets to attack again if it destroys monster by battle and then it can add polymerization but that's not what i'm talking about right what i'm talking about now is ancient gear duel and duel is a new card out of uh, legacy of destruction as well which also gives us some kind of immunity right so monsters you control that are ancient gear golem or mention it are unaffected by your opponent activated monster effects so if you can get this on field in like a turn three scenario before your opponent like let's say or like if your opponent uses like Appaloosa or something or like Crystal Wing or SP, your ancient gears are completely unaffected. Second off, uh, if your opponent controls a monster, you can fusion summon one fusion monster that mentions ancient gear golem, which there's really only two of them, right? Megaton golem and ultimate ancient gear golem. Banishing materials mentioned on your field or graveyard, including, and this is really the only bad part of the card, is that you have to control a face up ancient gear golem. But trust me, it's worth it because if you do, fusion summon this monster it can make up to three attacks during each battle phase so you know how i was just talking about megaton Go golem earlier megaton golem normally has to use a certain number of ancient gear golems to attack a certain number of times or up to three times because they only use three materials now because of ancient gear duel this card can just attack three times it doesn't care which monsters you use because duel is going to give it three attacks and it's not just attacks on monsters, it's attacks in general. Sadly, this clause cannot be applied to Chaos Ancient Gear Giant, 
because Giant does not mention the original Ancient Gear Golem and is simply just a fusion card. I believe the most optimal route is to make Giant with the regular Ancient Gear Golem, uh, with the regular Ancient Gear Fusion and to make Megaton Golem with Ancient Gear Duel. But Ancient Gear Duel is a trap card. So how are we gonna be able to resolve a trap card, right? How can a trap card in an Ancient Gear deck work if you have to set it? It wouldn't, right? Like even, it's not doing anything during my opponent's turn. None of the Ancient Gear fusions really do anything during my opponent's turn, anything worth summoning them during the opponent's turn. So how, how can we take advantage of Duel? And that's where Ancient Gear Commander comes in. So Commander lets us send Golem from hand deck or face a monster zone to graveyard to immediately normal summon another Ancient Gear monster. So he's kind of like the Flanderese. And then if you happen to summon an Ancient Gear Golem while you control him, you can also summon an Ancient Gear Golem from hand or graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions, which is great, right? Because you're milling Ancient Gear Golem to get that double summon. And then if you happen to summon another Ancient Gear Golem, you can revive that golem that you milled from graveyard because it says ignoring summoning conditions. Now you can banish this card from your graveyard and place an ancient gear continuous trap from your hand to your face up field. So that means if you can search or if you already have access to duel, you don't even need to set it. So commander circumvents the clauses of the previous ancient gear cards because it allows you to place the ancient gear continuous traps without needing to set them meaning it's slightly more effective because now you can activate duel on your turn essentially once you get commander to graveyard is possibly even an argument that you don't even need to normal summon commander or to summon commander at all like you can just search fusion plus duel off of dark golem you can activate fusion, mill a copy of commander, and then you can just banish commander, activate duel from hand. And then if, if you can, if you can then get another copy of ancient gear golem on field, you can then use duel to fusion summon using, using its effect. And then you can attack three times. So, but don't worry, we'll, we'll get into all those combos and stuff. So what is the last card that I want to discuss about with the new ancient gear stuff? It's ancient gear tanker. So tanker, is when it's normal special summon, you can summon an ancient gear monster from hand, except another copy of itself, ignoring summoning conditions. So it does summon out your ancient gear golem, the OG. Or if your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon it from your graveyard instead. Meaning this can potentially be really strong follow-up if we're going second or if our opponent already controls a monster somehow. Tanker can go fucking hard. This is way better going second. But going first, what is this supposed to do? Well, this is the purpose of it going first, not just to Marauding Captain because it cannot revive from grave if your opponent has no monsters, but uh, you can target a face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do for the rest of this turn, all monsters you control that are Ancient Gear Golem or mention it will gain 600 attack, himself included because he mentions Ancient Gear Golem. So if you're able to search a Gear Town in the middle of your turn, then Gear Town, you can pop the Gear Town with Tanker's effect, and then Tanker can then, then Gear Town can summon any Ancient Gear monster from hand deck or graveyard. If we are searching Tanker and Commander, right, because we want Commander on field when we summon a copy of Ancient Gear Golem, and if we have Tanker, we can pop a Gear Town and then summon Dark Golem from graveyard, hand, uh, hand deck or graveyard, and because it's treated as Ancient Gear Golem, it can still trigger Commander. So basically, you summon Commander, you dump one, you summon Tanker, you summon another Ancient Gear from hand, and then you get into a Gear Town, and then by popping that Gear Town with Tanker, you can summon another Dark Golem, and then summon back that, ancient, that regular Ancient Gear Golem from Graveyard. It has really nice synergy to it. Like, it's this this new support has potential. It, like, there's something there. And I think that's what you should keep in the front of your mind as you read a lot of this Ancient Gear support, is that there is something there. Not only can, can Tanker destroy Gear Town, but it can also destroy Fortress. Again, as a last, last ditch scenario, if you need the follow-up, you can also pop Fortress to summon back Ancient Gear monsters from Graveyard, which as we saw earlier, Ancient Gear Fusion can mill a lot of them to, from deck to Graveyard. So not just for uh, Tanker, but also for Fortress to be able to summon back Ancient Gears from Graveyard. It, that pretty much sums up everything in Legacy Destruction. I mean, there's also Ancient Gear Ballista, but if you've played the game for like the past few years, if you played during Super Heavy Samurai format, you probably know what Ancient Gear Ballista does. Two Earth Machines on Summon adds an Ancient Gear monster 
or gear town from deck to hand so it allows you to convert your resources on field into gear town if you search box right and box is a great one as well because you can use it as like link fodder or exceed fodder and then ballista also has the effect which is really only good going second where it can pop a spell and trap you control in a face of monster opponent controls attack becomes zero until the end of the turn attack and defense become zero so even if it's in defense position so ballista is a lot better going second not saying you won't summon it going first but going second it's way stronger and that's really important too now that we've covered the brunt of the support coming in legacy of destruction i should also mention before we get into the combos and such that two more cards for Ancient Gears have been revealed. One was revealed like a few weeks back, and that one is Ancient Gear Dragon. And so Dragon cannot be special summoned by normal means. And this is a really sad thing for anybody trying to use Dragon in maybe a non-Ancient Gear deck, because now Dragon is really high maintenance. It can normal summon itself if you only control earth machine monsters but only sporting 500 attack normal summoning it is kind of a bad deal now when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or effect you can send a machine from your hand or face a field or one ancient gear golem from deck to grave to negate that effect it doesn't destroy the spell or trap but that's fine i think for what it does i think that's pretty good and it's not hard for ancient gear to bring this out it's just awkward because you'll have to choose this over potential extenders. And so once we get into the combos, you'll realize that the extenders are somewhat kind of important, especially for playing around hand traps and, and, and such. So I don't know where this card will come into the lines. I'm sure there will be at some point a reason to play Gear Dragon, but I don't think it's a staple by any means. I think it's good. It's just not a staple by any means, maybe a good side deck. And then, we have Ancient Gear Statue. And Ancient Gear Statue is a level two Earth Machine with 500 attack, so it can be searched off of box. And you can only special summon this card with its effect once per turn. It's an inherent summon, it doesn't actually activate, so that's a good summoning condition, right? So if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. It's great that it doesn't activate, so that allows it to summon itself for free. And then two is you can tribute this card, summon Ancient Gear Golem or a monster that mentions it from hand or deck, excuse me, ignoring its summoning conditions. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because this allows us to summon out Ancient Gear Dragon. The spell and trap negate, we have free access to it. Dark Golem, we have free access to it. It just can't summon Wyvern, but that's not really a big deal when Dark Golem is an option. And uh, it can also summon the OG Ancient Gear Golem, but not like you would ever do that. But that's really good because now that means we have A, another starter and be another card with more access into negates and interruptions and it, it's a really good card for going second but don't hold your breath about this card the reason why is because this is an animation chronicle 2024 card now just to put this into perspective the original armored exceed spell card came out in animation chronicle 2023 for the ocg in summer 2023 the armored exceed spell card did not release in the TCG until January of 2024. That is about a five to six month time difference between when an animation chronicle card comes out in OCG and comes out in TCG. And sadly, the same thing can be said for Ancient Gear Dragon. Dragon is a V-Jump promo, which in a way is even worse because V-Jump promos have some really weird exclusivity to them. So it's really rare that we get any V-Jump promos early. It took us like two to three years to get Deco Talker Heat Soul, and that was originally a V-Jump promo. So what you can expect is that the Ancient Gear stuff will come initially in Legacy of Destruction and may or may not do pretty well. Well, but this additional support will not be releasing in TCG in any convenient time frame. Like, don't expect it to release in TCG conveniently, I would say. Just hold your expectations for now. That being said, Statue is only another card for going second. Dragon at least goes first or second, but you really don't need Dragon, and Dragon's awkward to summon without a card like Statue. It's very possible Statue doesn't even come to TCG this year and that's really sad to think about. It may come out by like the end of the year, like uh, October, December, November. 
like maybe they may throw it into a set towards the end of the year, but don't hold your breath about it because there's the combos in this video will not be involving Ancient Gear Statue and Ancient Gear Dragon for those reasons. But just know that basically going second, going first, you get an extra starter, but it uses your normal summon if it's going first. Going second, you get an extra extender that can potentially get you another interruption to stop your opponent from playing the game or to stop your opponent from stopping you from playing the game. Will this support really come up? Probably. I think it will make the deck a lot better, but let's see what the deck can do first before we worry about releasing statue and dragon here in tcg before we start the combos i want to go over the game plan what is it that we're aiming to do as an ancient gear player going first this is what we're aiming to set up we go for the ancient gear advance advance allows us to search catapult we can then activate the gear town and then catapult can then pop gear town to summon out the ancient gear dark Golem. Dark Golem triggers, right? And as I said, Dark Golem, Chain Link 1, Gear Town, Chain Link 2. That way you are chain blocking the Dark Golem from any kind of activation. And Gear Town is like less important in this scenario. You've already summoned your Dark Golem. Gear Town is going to summon Wyvern. Dark Golem's going to search you. Tanker plus Box. Wyvern's going to trigger and then Box is going to trigger. Because of the way that effects work here in TCG, Wyvern will always have to be chain link one, box will always be chain link two, and that's because public knowledge trigger effects always work before non-public knowledge trigger effects. So that's either cards in hand or, or set face down, right? So those would be trigger effects, like if you have like a trap card that's a trigger effect, or if you have like a card in hand that's a trigger effect. Every known trigger effect on field that, that is public knowledge has to resolve first from both you, then so turn player, then non-turn player, then turn players um, non-public knowledge trigger effects. So basically, Wyvern would be one here, Box would be two here, because they are both trigger effects in this scenario. So now Box is gonna search us to Anchor Drill, which if you're very familiar with Infinitrax, you know Anchor Drill is just a good extender to have. And also because we haven't used our normal summon yet, it's pretty good. And then Wyvern's gonna search us Ancient Gear Commander, which has 500 attack, but we didn't search it with Gearbox because there's no other way to search Anchor Drill. In theory, we could have just searched commander off of box and then search a different spell and trap card off of a uh, wyvern but we're doing it like this because we're going first yeah so now we summon anchor drill anchor drill allows us to summon out commander from hand and we're gonna overlay into gear you got act this is just a game plan this is assuming this is before assuming about any hand traps or anything we can go into gear you got x but we're gonna save the d's hatch and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you why in a second now we're going to activate Commander's Effect to drop Ancient Gear Golem from hand or deck to get an extra normal summon. And it's really convenient because if you happen to hard open the Ancient Gear Golem, it's not a brick. You still get to send it to Grave to get an extra normal summon. So you get to normal summon out Tanker, right? And because we're going first, our opponent controls no monsters. Kind of kind of sucks, but is what it is. We are allowed to summon out Ancient Gear Box. Now we're going to link off into the Ancient Gear Ballista to search gear town and if our opponent had a monster ballista would be able to pop this gear town but because our opponent's field is empty because we're going first we have to pop our own gear town with tanker because tanker can tar uh, destroy any card we control to make any ancient gear that mentions ancient gear golem gain 600 so now gear town will trigger be because it was destroyed and summon back dark golem from graveyard it can summon dark golem from anywhere this is going to be like a question to you as a player do you want to only run one dark golem because after the first one that you summon you really don't need to play a second one it really doesn't come up unless the first one gets banished so that's a question to you as a player do you feel like you need a second one commander can then trigger here on the summon to dark golem because ancient gear golem was summoned you get to summon another Ancient Gear Golem from Graveyard, which is the one that we milled to get the extras summon. So now we get access to two level eights here, and although they're both duds, they don't do anything that makes them worth keeping around for. We can overlay them for Sargus, and then Sargus can search us a Regulus. Now, Regulus can take anything from Graveyard, summon itself. Now we're gonna activate the Gear Gigant X, detach one to search, and the reason why we waited was for Sargus, because it can target a card on field and add it back to hand or destroy it. So we're gonna take our advance, 
back to hand for follow-up. Look at that, right? It's brilliant, right? It's genius. Now we're gonna link off into a three negate apo. Then we're gonna use the rev synchron that we searched, by the way. Didn't really uh, bring any attention to the fact that we searched revolution synchron. And that allows us to search a card like Ancient Fairy Dragon. And I'm sure, you know, you guys aren't stupid. You can probably guess why we're playing a card like Ancient Fairy Dragon. And that's because it can pop field spells. So if our tanker gets negated, we got Ancient Fairy. Now we can use rev bring it back and go into something like a crystal wing. This is five negates, by the way. One off crystal wing, three off apo, one off regulus. That's five negates, even though four of them are monster negates, it's gonna be hard for our opponent to navigate this on top of the fact that we have gear geek on X as follow-up. Going first, this is our game plan. We wanna set up a multi-negate board that will be hard for our opponent to play around. And I don't think it'll be impossible for our opponent to break this, right? Because if they can bait a single Apple Negate, they can probably swing over it and then like bait Crystal Wing, bait Regulus, and maybe make a small board. Maybe be able to get rid of Gear Gigant X, but not likely. So now we're gonna go into turn three. So this is just a turn three scenario where our Negates worked. Apple plus Crystal Wing plus Regulus was too much for them to play around. So now we get to go for advance. They'll, they'll probably just scoop right there. To be honest, you probably like this is this is not necessary, but this is assuming like they were able to somewhat break the board, right? Because Regulus has to leave to negate an Apple one or two negates off of this. They could probably swing over it anyway. So Crystal Wing will probably be the only one left on your field. So we're going to use advance to search Fortress, right? And I mentioned before how good Fortress was. And now we can use Catapult in Graveyard, right? Like even the turn after we've already resolved it, it's still gonna be very useful because we can banish it to pop our Fortress to summon out an Ancient Year token. Fortress can summon out Dark Golem. Dark Golem can then search up to two Ancient Gear cards from our deck. So now we get to search Ancient Gear Fusion and Ancient Gear Duel, and we have to drop one, but that's fine. Because Advance was added back to hand and it added Fortress, the card that we draw for turn, we can just discard for Dark Golem. So you should always have something to discard for Dark Golem. So now we get to add Fusion and we get to add Duel. Commander's still in Graveyard. We can just banish it, straight up activate Duel, right? Because, because we resolved Dark Golem, it's not like we could set the Duel anyway. So it's really convenient that, you know, at any point we can just, you know, Commander, Activate duel. Monsters that we that are ancient gear golem or mention it are unaffected by opponent's monster effects. And now we can ancient gear fusion into the ancient gear megaton golem, which we could have used duel, right? Like assuming that you've kept this board, it's probably better to use duel here anyway, because duel would would have given megaton golem like three attacks instead of just two. But it's it's really like personal preference it's still not bad to have dual because it makes megaton unaffected and it still has two attacks and the two attacks from megaton golem plus you know crystal wing could be really impactful uh if we still have gear gigant we could search an, another tanker and if they control a monster we can revive uh one of our ancient gear golems from graveyard before before we resolve ancient gear fusion or like before we resolve duel. And so basically you'd still have access to another fusion on top of this. So this is basically 10 pi 2.0 or boneless 10 pi, right? Like you'd be putting up so much damage on board. It would be hard for your opponent to play around it. We can make an ultimate ancient gear golem with uh, ancient gear duel. We could have made giant off of ancient gear fusion and then made ultimate ancient gear golem off of duel. And that's four attacks with, with over 4K attack each and they all do piercing. So that's the game plan for Ancient Gear going first. Here's the game plan for going second. So I'm gonna swap this around. So you're going second, your opponent summon, you know, this isn't like an actual negate board, but this is just, your opponent has a monster, right? That's the scenario. The Ancient Gear game plan going second with full combo, which is catapult plus advance, you're gonna be starting the same way, but you're not gonna be searching a lot of the same cards. Or you're not gonna be searching all the same cards. So you see this time we search Fusion, we search Tanker. We still have Wyvern here to search us Duel. Look at this, we're going for Duel plus Fusion when it's going second because these are our going second OTK cards. These, both, either one of these cards could, could potentially win us the game this battle phase. So now we Ancient Gear Fusion. We mill all of our cards to get Gear Giant on field. We can summon out Tanker now. Tanker can then revive Ancient Gear Commander. 
if you're a little worried about nib and all that that's that's fair you could pre you can mill two commanders off of ancient gear fusion just so that you can resolve duel before you go for tanker and that way tanker can't be negated by something like valor it can't be because it does mention ancient gear golem so tanker would be unaffected commander would be unaffected giant would not be unaffected but it's unaffected by spell and traps so that's something right uh and if you if you really was worried about something like nibiru you could just summon the megaton golem off of gear giant and that way duel would be perfect right like they would not be able to touch your ancient gear monsters with monster effects this is just going over the game plan this isn't assuming our opponent has any sort of interruption we're gonna go for commander we're gonna go for ballista ballista is gonna be able to search us gear town and this time ballista is self-sufficient we don't need tanker anymore because ballista can pop the gear town and reduce any opponent's monsters attack and defense to zero once gear town's destroyed we get to bring back something like dark golem and because Gear Golem was summoned, Gear Commander's gonna summon out another Golem. We get to link off into something like Appaloosa. The reason why we can't make a rank eight here is because we still need one ancient, at least one Ancient Gear Golem on field to resolve Ancient Gear Duel. Objectively, in the battle phase, the OG Ancient Gear Golem is slightly better than the uh, older one. I mean, than Dark Golem. So now we can banish Commander, go for Duel, and if your opponent has more than one monster, you can attack with Golem before you, you, you resolve Duel's fusion effect. But even if even if you don't, right, you can get to go into like Megaton Golem. Uh, if they if the field is clear, boom, right? What's great is that if this is a nib token, you can also slash this down to zero just so you can uh, guarantee swing over it. So you can always summon the nib token in attack position just so that you can always go for game through the nib token. You don't even need to summon Typhon to bounce the token. Like you don't even need to remove the token from the field. You, If anything, it's better if the token stays there. So now you can like make a ton golem, attack gear golem. You can, you know, and then you get three attacks off of make a ton. You, could, you can get an attack off a of giant and then you still have something like Apo here just to, you know, mediate any other interruptions they may have. But once you hit battle phase, your opponent's monsters can't activate their effects anyway. So if you want to go into something like a Boral Sword instead of Apo, you can do that as well. Uh, personal preference. And yeah, that is the game plan going second. You can inflict uh, over 20k damage in a uh, battle phase. <laughs> if you, if, if we went for Borosword and if this was the ultimate Ancient Gear Golem rather than Megaton Golem, we can inflict well over 20k in the battle phase. I'm too lazy to calculate the actual numbers, but I just know it's over 20k. So now that we've covered the game plans, let's look at our one card combo. Oh, look at this hidden tech card that I uh, accidentally put in our one card combo video. Now our one card will be with Wyvern, but I did want to mention Heat Wave before we continue with the video. So what Heat Wave can do for Ancient Gear Golem, it can do the same thing that it does for Tenpai. Except for Tenpai, it's better. Heat Wave for us, if we happen to go first, right? Like we kind of want a hard second, but if our opponent makes us go first, Heat Wave can be a significant card because then it, it can allow us to potentially game the opponent without having to play a first turn at a disadvantage. Basically, Heat Wave allows us to play a turn two or turn three and OTK the opponent, even though we went first. And that's the benefit of playing Heat Wave. It's a very restrictive card, and it's a little more experimental in a deck like Angie Gear compared to something like Tenpai, which can play around Heat Wave pretty well because they don't need the opponent to actually control a monster to inflict over 30k. Our one card combo will be with Wyvern. So either Wyvern or statue is what this combo is, right? So Wyvern can search advance, advance can search catapult. Advance can then tribute Wyvern, draw us a card, and then we can use catapult to, to destroy the advance to summon out Dark Golem. Dark Golem can then add two, drop one. And so here we get to activate Ancient Gear Fortress and we're gonna use Ancient Gear Fusion here just to go for Howitzer. And we're gonna use Howitzer to inflict a thousand past turn. Why is this important? Why make a board like this? The reason we want to make a board like this is because this is like the best way to play Ancient Gear with follow-up. So we have the Catapult in Graveyard, we have Dark Golem in Graveyard. Dark Golem 
going into turn three, if they decide not to hit over the Howitzer because they don't want us to um, summon an Ancient Gear from deck, which would be a smart idea, turn three, Catapult can pop Fortress. And we, we don't even need to activate the Fortress. We can just keep the Fortress in hand. We don't need to protect the Howitzer, actually. You actually don't even need to activate Fortress here. But turn three, we can activate Fortress, Catapult pop Fortress, summon out a token, summon out Dark Golem, and add either a copy of Duel or another copy of Ancient Gear Fusion. And with Duel, if your opponent controls a single monster, which they probably will, you'll be able to go into Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem or Megaton Golem and be able to swing for over 10k damage. And the fact that you've, you've already done some of the work by hitting them down to 7,000 with Howitzer is kind of funny. And this is all off of one card, right? So we drew a card to replace what we lost and we started with two cards in hand, or we started with five cards in hand, right? And if we would have kept the Fortress in hand, that would still be the two cards. It would be the five cards that we started with. We, we made this board state with follow up using just the one card. And I think this is a good board state, like mixed with like a few hand traps, possibly Nibiru, right? Because Howitzer's unaffected by Nibiru as well. This could be a really interesting way to uh, game the opponent or to, to set up against the opponent. Heat Wave does work too. Heat Wave is a one card com combo in this scenario as well. So it's really interesting, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how effective this is if you're not playing a lot of non-engine. And I think uh, playing a lot of non-engine in this deck is going to be important just so you can stop your opponent from like making a board if you're going first. I mean, if you're going second. So Heat Wave would not be in main. Heat Wave would only be inside and sided in when you're when you know that they're going to make you go first. What if our one card combo is Ancient Gear Advance? What if we don't use our normal summon to get to Dark Golem? And this is actually a lot more interesting because now, by not using our normal summon, we can actually search some of our other Ancient Gear monsters, right? So we can search Box and Tanker. And don't don't worry about Wyvern, he'll, he'll come up later. And now because we searched Box, we can, get, we can then go for Commander, right? Because we're not summoning Wyvern plus Dark Golem at the same time, we can't go for like Anchor Drill. It's better to just go for Commander off of the box. So now we can normal summon out the Commander, we can mill one, summon out the Tanker. Tanker, because we have no, because our opponent has no monsters, we can only summon from hand, so we're gonna summon out Box. We can link into Ballista here. Ballista can search us for Gear Town, activate Gear Town. Tanker can then pop Gear Town to summon one from deck. Or from grave right dark golem and because we're summoning dark golem while we while we control commander we can revive the golem that we milled we can overlay into something like gear gigant we get a gear gigant to search overlay into something like sargus sargus to search and now we have follow-up plus a negate right so we get to go for regulus here and we just link into apo and this is fine this is perfectly fine like just First, we just need to stop the opponent enough to stop them from like having a big board full of negates. As long as we can do like just enough to stop them from gaming us and getting a big board full of negates, we have follow up. We have catapult and grave to pop stuff like ancient gear fortress and to revive dark golem. We have full combo. As long as we can survive this one turn, advance was one card in hand that we used. Like we started advance plus four of the cards. Now we just have the four of the cards. Hand hand traps, non-engine. I don't care if we nib. We, I don't care about keeping this Apo. Regulus has to go to grave to negate anyway. Nibiru is going to be really good in a situation like this. Now, that being said, I actually do only play one Ballista in the list that you're going to see. And I am going to say, just for now, this is the kind of situation that you want to play two Ballista. If you nib them, you want to be able to take that opponent's nib token and turn its attack and defense to zero. You don't always have to be that sweaty. You don't have to make like three to four negates. You can do something simple. So we're gonna go for a simpler line again. If you just open the advance. If you really like the Howitzer line, like let's say you're playing in time or something, this is uh, another way you can go for it, right? So this time we're not keeping the commander on field. We're just popping the Gear Town. Gear Town's gonna get us to Wyvern. Wyvern's gonna search for fusion. We can make Apo, we can go for fusion. We can go for Howitzer, and boom, right? Simpler board state. We could search Duel off of um, Wyvern as well. It's nowhere near as strong, but again, if you just want to go for Howitzer, this is a potential board you can make. Now, let's say you drew 
catapult. I mean, you drew advanced plus gear town. Let's say you happen to draw gear town in your opening hand. Now you're, you know, going first board starts to be a lot better. So we get to go Dark Golem. Dark Golem, get us Box and Commander. Right now, obviously, you would not discard gear, uh, Terraforming if you drew it, but I just needed something to discard. So that's the only reason why Terraforming is here. Uh, but yeah, we do get to search Gear Town plus. Oh no, I think we search Box off of Wyvern. We summon Wyvern first here, which, in retrospect, not what you should do. Always summon Dark Golem off of the Catapult and Wyvern off of the Gear Town. Just. For future reference so now we have a pretty good situation here because we're we have tanker tanker could then summon out um, our box and you're like why are we not summoning out commander well because we needed to make it a gate before we summoned our fifth monster so as, as you can see we only summoned out four monsters before this reflation literally the four monsters we had on field were the only four monsters that we summoned and were we to continue without protecting ourselves you know without go going in without protection we were vulnerable to a nibiru so we can make this Rafflesia here in case they have a nib to threaten them with the Gravedigger's Trap Hole to burn them for 2k if they attempt to activate Nibiru. We do this because if you don't feel like playing Anchor Drill, this is the way that you can go. You can play, you can make a negate in under five summons, right? And it's just two, any two level fours. Assuming you don't open box and assuming you don't open the Gravedigger's Trap Hole, you'll be gaming. So now we get to go for Gear Town. Tanker can pop the Gear Town. Gear Town can then summon another copy of Commander from deck. And now Commander, Mill Golem, summon Commander. Advance can tribute a Golem to draw Advance. You can then go for something like Dugaris, and Dugaris can detach two to summon out Dark Golem from deck. Now, this is a little risky because you have to skip your next main phase one. And so I would only advise that you do this if you have a way into Ancient Gear Duel, which in retrospect, I should have searched Ancient Gear Duel off of off of this first scenario as well, but it's fine. So you have to go for Golem, you get to go for Sargus. IP. Or if they hold something like in hand for their turn, you can use Reflesia's effect to negate then. And if you use Reflesia's effect to negate during your opponent's turn, Sargus can trigger, bounce back your own advance. And so in that way, you have Reflesia as an, uh, as an interruption, Sargus, either bouncing back your own card or popping another card on field as an interruption and then you have regulus as an interruption and you have ip mascarina which can make either apo or sp ip into sp so you can choose to keep sargus on field potentially search another regulus or you can go into a three negate apo you don't even have the ancient your golem on field actually never mind this combo's kind of washed yeah this combo's kind of washed actually never mind If we draw Advance plus Gear Town, this is something that we can do, right? We can go for Wyvern, Wyvern and Dark Golem, and uh, in retrospect, you always summon the Dark Golem off the Catapult and the Wyvern off the Gear Town, just so Dark Golem can be chain blocked, but it, it's fine. If they don't have an interruption, then it, it doesn't matter, but just for like future reference, that's how you should do it. Um, Although Dark Golem can be chain blocked by the box, so I guess it's not the worst case scenario, but you don't want to lose to like an Ash on Gear Town. So we search Box off of Wyvern, and Box was able to get us the Anchor Drill, and then Dark Golem goes for Commander plus Tanker. Now we can normal summon Anchor Drill, special summon out Commander, um, and Anchor Drill always summons in defense. But this is actually really good. This is an amazing setup because now we get to use Anchor Drill to target Wyvern and make them both level eight. And the reason why this is so great is because, as you can see, we've only summoned four monsters exactly, right? Two level eight goes for number 90. And we have to go for 90 here. We can't go for Sargus because if we were to go for Sargus, search Regulus, then we'd be susceptible to a Nibiru at this point in time. And we don't want to get nibbed because we have our commander. Um, and because commander is an ignition effect to normal summon, and it's not on summon, it's a better summon than, than tanker, uh, allowing us to save tanker and box for later on in our turn. So yeah, we go, we, we have to go for number 90. We can then use commander, mill golem, summon out tanker. Tanker can then, because we, we don't control any monsters, or because our opponent doesn't control any monsters, we have to summon from hand, so tanker can, can then summon box. 
Uh, we can link into Ballista. Ballista's gonna get us Gear Town. Gear Town's gonna add us, uh, or Gear Town's gonna be, be popped by the tanker, and Gear Town can then summon out a Dark Golem from, you know, either the, the one from deck or the one from Graveyard. And then Commander can summon out either Dark Golem or regular Golem from Graveyard, because they both count as Ancient Gear Golem in Grave. Um, you get to overlay into another level eight, which is uh, Sargus. Right, you get to go for Regulus. Uh, we go for Apo here. You could go Gear Gigant to bounce back your own Ancient Gear, Ancient Gear Advance, and then make something like IP. Like if you want to link off the Sargus, but I like this slightly better because um, in this way, number 90 is still here. So if we use our number 90 to, to um, stop an opponent's monster effect, Sargus can then bounce back our own Ancient Gear Advance or remove an opponent's card on field if we already have access to follow up. So it's actually really convenient. And now we have five negates again, plus a potential six interruption if, we, if you already opened another follow-up card but you only have two other cards in hand and hopefully there are hand traps or something and then you get to draw as long as you have like one follow-up card you should be all right in this situation you have five to six interruptions depending on on your scenario and this is like the best it can get going second but again just like i showed the game plan uh going second this is just assuming that you have no hand trap i mean uh, our opponent has no interruptions, just showing you guys again the going first combo. Yeah, anchor drill, commander, gear gigant. Hold the hold the gear gigant. Go tanker, box, ballista, gear town. Activate gear town. Pop the gear town. Gear town. Summon out dark. Commander summon out regular golem, Sargus, Sargus search Regulus, Girgigant X search out Rev Synchron, and this is like, oh yeah, and bounce to advance, and you really don't have to play Rev Synchron, like, it's a somewhat of an expensive card, it's only like 20 bucks, but that's kind of expensive for, for a single. And you'd have to play like Ancient Fairy and Crystal Wing. Like if, by cutting out this one card, you can save two slots in the extra deck. So personal preference, but I'm just showing it because it's a potential play. So Ancient Fairy, Crystal Wing, and again, five negates uh, plus follow up with Gear Gigant and with Ancient Gear Advance. So really, really cool stuff that Ancient Gear can do. So this is the deck list that I've been working with. I put all our flex spots near the bottom here. Box is a staple, but you know, hard drawing box sucks sometimes. You actually don't really need frame. I really thought that you needed frame when I first played this deck. If you wanna, when you gear town, if you open catapult plus gear town and you, and you like go into the combo later, right? When you get that second gear town off ballista, instead of summoning a, a, another golem, if you really want the um, ancient gear duel you can go for that and then you'll have ancient gear frame plus duel and then you can like gear gigant into rev synchron and then rev plus frame can make the crystal wing frame is very optional because you have to discard to, to utilize its search and it only searches spells and traps mind you that mention ancient gear golem which isn't that many because catapult doesn't mention ancient gear golem gear town doesn't mention ancient gear golem advance does mention ancient gear golem so advance is searchable off of uh frame so i guess advance is an alternative starter to wyvern but i think the more that i play test this deck i don't think frame is necessary if you feel like the deck needs more starters then frame is like where you would go to find that it also doesn't lock you out of setting if you search with it so i guess that's the one benefit but that's we're not setting cards in this deck anyway Anyway, unless you hard open grave diggers trap hole but that's that's kind of just tough that's kind of just is what it is that's why i'm a little over 40. you see only the one fortress the one gear golem and the one dark golem and i have extras here but i think the two regular gear golem might be necessary for 
gear fusion or for ancient gear duel but they're not like mandatory if you feel like you want to resolve commander a second time or if you're going to resolve dragon a second time or if you're going to resolve dragon at all you might want to play the second gear golem but you don't have to same thing for dark golem you really don't have to use a second one but if you feel like first one's going to be like a really easy sp target then you can play the second one but it's not mandatory by any means the game might might not even go that long right like you might not even end up in a grind game state if you're able to resolve dual or fusion hand trap lineup so we got uh ash valor nib mourner mourner's funny right for if you mix mourner with like nibiru then they take the damage or if you mourner like a flameberg they may just willingly take like the 3k before they realize that you're on like ancient gear and they're like fuck i should not have taken that 3k <laughs> and then droplet right it's a versatile card for going first and second you can't set the droplet if you go first but like it's a good card to like hold in hand for like turn three if you happen to go first droplet's fine in main deck like maybe you can side it out if you know that you're going first but in main deck i think droplet's fine uh call by is fine rev is fine but again optional frame is fine but optional you only play it if you want extra starters to get to grab inch gear advance uh, second golem and second dark golem optional for follow-up and anchor drill is optional for follow-up you can make something like reflesia instead to go for gravedigger's trap hole but reflesia is not as strong as like 90. you can save an extra deck slot if you're not playing the reflesia it's a really personal preference so for the side deck i have ancient gear explosive here like in case you don't want to go for howitzer and you just want to like if you get drilled or something off of dark golem you can just activate explosive inflict 15 in time but that's really not necessary when you have a card like howitzer the original ancient gear is kind of funny i really wish this card said if you control an ancient gear monster you can summon this card but it only says if you control another copy of itself which is just why why are you like this and then hunting hound i mentioned it earlier but its issue is that it doesn't search another copy of hunting hound so yeah 38 right uh runic stun and other potential annoying decks like that so super heavy samurai package i was on it at first but unfortunately catapult and advance just make it too awkward the fact that the ancient gear engine starts with spell cards more than it starts with monsters makes a super heavy package like kind of impossible to the function in this deck reborn's interesting because this is the other ancient gear continuous trap card that you can activate off of commander from hand the only issue being or you can only use the effect if you control no monsters the positive being reborn can actually rebuild a board because it's a once per turn revive and it doesn't have to stay face up on field to revive the monster. It's not like Call of the Haunted where if Called, of the Haunt Called by the Haunted is like removed from, from the field, the monster gets removed as well. It's like Reborn you can just summon back a monster every single turn, an Ancient Gear monster every single turn. It's a really interesting card for Ancient Gear, but I don't think it's a staple only because it's just unlikely that it'll come up unless your board gets broken and if you play the the right setup it's also like you, you don't want to draw into this like duel you don't mind drawing duel because it makes you half your monsters like unaffected you really can't do anything drawing reborn first turn so it's kind of tragic i was considering gamma just because catapult plus advance really big hand trap bait so gamma could be a potential player in this deck and then you know dark golem has to discard anyway so you know if we hard open driver we can discard it with dark golem so that could be cool i was almost using gravity controller with sargus and then i realized i was like wait a minute i'm playing a machine deck i don't need to gravity controller sargus platinum gadget i'm the biggest platinum gra gadget detractor it's half the reason why i didn't play the machina variant of earth machine because i just hated this card as a mandatory part of a combo because this is the biggest imperm bait and then you need to set up its link arrows correctly and then it can't even be used as link material to turn to summon like get out of here i hate this card i i think this card is stinky and i don't want to use it but i just i'm just showing it to you just so you you guys know that it's an option in your deck i just personally don't think it's necessary or that it's good but that's just me but that's another thing about sargus that i was a little mad about is that sargus is a fire machine and that ballista only takes earth machines so like that's why sargus is a little awkward in this deck sometimes because you can't use it to make ballista when it would be so easy if it can make ballista search regulus and then be used as like this plus like a ancient gear box to make ballista oh my god that would be perfect black rose if you hard open rev synchron and you like summon something like the wyvern you can like you know rev synchron plus wyvern into like black rose 
board wipe. And then, you know, if you have something like Gear Town, Gear Town can then trigger off Black Rose. And it'll just, it just, it just makes it easier to go second. Like if you don't feel like playing like some of the, like Reflasia or like the IP, because I, I don't think IP always comes up, then you can play something like Black Rose. Personal preference. Second Regulus, if you make Sargus going first and you want to keep Sargus on field for going, uh, for going into turn three, a second Regulus could be really strong. And then because you're milling a lot of ma machines with Ancient Gear Fusion and just your combo lines in general, having a Regulus for like those smaller negates could be very impactful from making sure that you can play the game properly. And then, you know, Regulus into Regulus is great because then you don't go minus when Regulus resolves. Cosmics, Heat Waves, as I explained earlier, Heat Waves here, just as a side in for going first. And then Foolish Burial Goods with like Clockwork Knight. I was considering playing Clockwork in this deck, but I was like, eh, Foolish Burial Goods. Like the only thing you would mill it for is Catapult because it's a hard ones per turn on its graveyard effect. And there are some situations where you may just want to use the graveyard effect of it and not the summon effect because the graveyard effect can be activated no matter how many monsters you control. So it may be a little more interesting to use the graveyard effect in a lot of scenarios. And then Clockwork Knight because you can banish it to add an earth machine i'm thinking like if we hard open it we can drop it up uh for dark golem or if we mill it off foolish burial goods it could be another potential starter but it gets into the point where earth machine or just like regular earth machine you almost have too many starters and i thought like six slots for something like clockwork knight maybe isn't that good typhon here because in case all else fails we still have typhon but you know duel is just good enough honestly and if we resolve duel i don't think we should we'll need a card like typhon personally a card like typhon would only be to stop Aaron, but like if we hard open droplet then that's not really an issue Merry makers here because sometimes you just end on two level fours like if you don't want to play anchor drill you can go Merry maker into sargus that won't protect you from nib that'll only make it easier to search a regulus but half the time you're not even making sargus first so I don't know. It's just not necessary, but it's an option. Another Ancient Gear Fusion. Some people feel like you may want to play a second one just for follow up, but I don't know. I don't think it'll have Gear Golem on field that many times. Like, it's better just to get dual. Even though, like, this is not a hard once per turn, you're going to have to use the Gear Golem on your field as material. And, like, unless you really are comboing off, if you're already allowed to combo off, a second Ancient Gear Fusion would just be one more dual plus fusion should be enough to like get you the game where there's a will there's a way out uh they made this they they named the shit something stupid in tcg but the reason why this is here is potentially for going second this could be a really effective card for searching off of like ancient fairy like if we keep our like let's say we don't use tanker or ballista or like let's say we have like another gear town if we go rev synchron to get ancient fairy this can like dig us for more cards potentially. Or if we open this and we go into Ancient Fairy, we can pop this to search another gear town. So that could be something interesting. And then Urgent Schedule, anyone who's played Yu-Gi-Oh or who's played Earth Machine before knows this card. It's the ultimate going second card. And although there's really nothing in Ancient Gear right now to take advantage of this, it's like you can play any two Earth Machines like Machina Fortress, Commander to Graveyard earlier on in your turn, just so it, you know, you can banish it for like dual. And then you can um, make an Ancient Gear Ballista before you even use your normal summon. And then Ballista can search, you know, Gear Town, pop Gear Town, and then be able to summon a Dark Golem and then potentially get you the game from there. So that could be really effective. And then like Lightning Storms and, you know, side ins. Uh, we want to be able to clear the board before battle phase. So Lightning Storm, Harpy's Fetter, Thrust, all that jazz. And then, as I mentioned, we, you, you won't be seeing much of Gear Dragon in this video just because I really doubt we're getting Gear Dragon in TCG anytime soon. I doubt it'll be anytime before fall, but that's just my call. That, that's just the way I see it. It might come in that Battles of Legends set. It might, but I, I wouldn't hold my hopes or I, I wouldn't keep my hopes up. And then uh, Fortress for going second, you can play two or three copies of these, or even for going first, if, if you really feel like you want to protect yourself against hand traps, it won't protect you against like a nib, but it'll protect you against like other interruptions, like um, hard negates, omnis, and all that kind of jazz. So if you feel like you need more protection against your opponent's, you know, board state, you could play more Fortress to play this deck. But yeah, um... That's Ancient Gear in 2024. I'm really 
happy that this deck has gotten so much stronger and it seems decent. I can't lie. Um, and it seems pretty cheap too. Like there's nothing really expensive in this deck, maybe besides the Rev Synchron um, and the Fortress. The Fortress, uh, these are like eight bucks each right now because these only came in the Ancient Gear Structure deck and they've never been reprinted. So that's why these might be a little awkward, but I don't think any of the Ancient Gear stuff from Legacy Destruction is gonna be high rarity. And even if it is, I don't think it's gonna be expensive. No one's expecting this deck to do anything significant. Everyone's looking at Tenpai, everyone's still looking at Voiceless, everyone's still looking at like Snake Eye uh, and like Melodious. So I don't, I think a lot of this stuff's gonna go under the radar and it's probably gonna be low rarity as well. Uh, especially like stuff like Advance. Dark Golem might be the only one they may make like an ultra rare or something, but the rest of these I feel like are gonna be like super rare and, and, and lower. Duel's definitely gonna be a common. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, if you haven't picked up this stuff already, a lot of this stuff is pretty cheap. Nothing from the Ancient Gear package is like relatively expensive. Um, and then, you know, like Regulus had had its reprint, uh, 90 had its reprint. So other than SP, which we literally didn't even go into in any of the combos, I don't think this deck is gonna be anything really expensive to get your hands on. So um, maybe if, this happens to be a high rarity card, but I don't think they, they'd make a card like this high rarity. It's just too gimmicky. Like it's not a bad card for Tenpai and for like Ancient Gear, but this is a hard going second card. And I don't think they're gonna make a card like this. Um, this is basically prosperity for going second. Like if, if you think about it. So that's, that's the only reason why they might make it like super or like ultra, but I don't think they'd, they'd do anything higher than that. So this has been your boy Nisha here. Let me know what you guys think. Bench gear in the comment section below. Signing out.